Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matty with the Toasty Rose, and we recently took a look at this Evo laptop, and we decided we wanted a little bit extra performance out of it, and by a little bit, we mean a lot. We're adding a dedicated graphics card. This is a GTX 970, which is a pretty fairly priced GPU right now in this GPU crisis we're in, and we're just gonna show you how you can add a graphics card to your laptop, potentially, if it supports it, but before we dive into that, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. I don't know about you guys, but one of the hardest parts about shopping online is going through all those Amazon reviews. How do you know if you're getting the absolute best price or if the reviews that you're seeing are legitimate? Were they paid for? You really can't tell. Well, today's video sponsor, Luster, has you covered. Luster is a free shopping tool that does extensive product research for you by finding real reviews and the best prices. They even summarize reviews from popular websites that I trust, like Wirecutter, Reddit, YouTube, and other niche blogs. You can even compare prices quickly to Amazon, Walmart, our Best Buy and Target to make sure you're getting the absolute best price for the product you're looking for. You could browse for RAM or storage or anything you need for your PC build and you can guarantee that you're gonna get the best price from these retailers. With Luster, you always find the best product for your money. Don't wait any longer. Luster is free to use by clicking the link in the description down below and installing it to your web browser. Thanks again to Luster for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get into the video, shall we? All right guys, so what we have going on here is we basically have this external PCIe adapter that goes to NVMe M.2. So the two things that you do have to have is an NVMe M.2 slot on your laptop, mini PC, computer, whatever it is. And then the other thing is you're gonna need a graphics card and you're gonna need a way to actually power this, which we have this nice Dell power brick, which all in, we did have to buy the actual adapter. We had to buy the power brick or a little over a hundred bucks and all that. And you have to buy the graphics card. And of course you have to have the laptop on hand. So overall, it's not the most practical thing in the world, but we're gonna go over exactly how it works. You'll see some footage while we do that of me setting this all up, but it's pretty simple to put together. And once you install the right driver for the graphics card, you're up and ready to game. So let's just go over this little setup real quick. All right, guys, so what exactly we have here, like I said, is this really fancy PCIe adapter, which this is kind of like a generic model. There's actually a lot of companies that make these, but as you can see, there's this ribbon cable coming off that is actually going inside of the laptop to the NVMe slot. Now, sometimes this is really impractical because you can kind of tell this plate is really just sitting there because the actual NVMe slot is under the whole entire back of the laptop. So right now it's really not even portable. Um, whenever you're using this adapter too, it really takes away any portability. So this is really only a good use case scenario if you happen to have a cheaper laptop and you have a really good graphics card lying around that you're just like, man, I don't have a computer yet. You know, I bought the graphics card, but I can't afford everything else. And you happen to be able to score yourself one of these for around 75 bucks. You can even use a normal power supply to power it actually, which we have done. There's actually a full 24 pin and then our external power uh, from here, which is plugged into our little brick. But normally you're just going to use a PCIe 8 pin adapter along with the 24 pin on a power supply, or you can just use this Dell um, OEM charger that we got off of eBay and uh, then you're pretty much ready to go. Then you just hook up, up your HDMI or display port to your monitor, and then you no longer have display on the actual laptop, which is kind of weird. There, there maybe is a way to do like dual displays, but probably not. I mean, we're just gonna say there's not, but some of you gurus out there might be able to figure out a way. So for now, you just have the secondary display, but in theory, you can actually use all of these graphics card ports. So if you have a graphics card with five ports on it, you could in theory hook up five monitors to it. Is it practical? Not really. Is any of this really practical? Yeah. Maybe you find a laptop with a broken screen too, and it's just like kind of useless. You can find a really good discount on that with a good CPU and then slap in one of these. Maybe there, there's the value. But you know what? This is a very not spill safe setup. So don't be spilling your Mountain Dew or anything. You'll be breaking some stuff and you just keep waving that finger like that. I'm a uh, But yeah, we're gonna go ahead and play some games on this thing and show you guys. One thing to note as well is there is going to be a little bit of latency as he smacks the HDMI. I had it pinned back, but there it is now. Um, there's gonna be a little bit of latency compared to just running off like a normal like PCI slot. Normally you lose about like 5% of the performance of the 970. So keep that in mind. And we are pairing it with a 3500U, which is a four core eight thread Ryzen. So yeah, we're just gonna go play some games and see how it performs. All right, guys, the first game we're gonna be testing is good old Fortnite. Now, this game in particular is gonna be interesting to see because it's very CPU dependent. We are running on performance mode, which if the stutter does keep up the way it is, we're probably gonna switch back to non-performance mode to really stress that GPU out. But again, it's very CPU dependent. And the 3500U is a pretty lower end CPU. It is four cores and eight threads, but again, in nowadays standards, a mobile like 3000 series Ryzen APU is gonna be held back in some games. And I really think a 970 is gonna be held 
held back by it. But just for the sake of testing, we wanted to see how this 208R laptop performed with a 970. And before we were not able to run at 1080p, we were running 720p, getting barely 60 FPS using those Vega graphics. And uh, yeah, as you can see right now, there is some stutter and that is definitely to do with the bottlenecking of the CPU. And that's something you need to keep in mind for yourself if you are gonna go with this setup. If you have a really old, CPU in your laptop, you're probably not going to do this because you're just going to have a lot of bottlenecking issues. But um, yeah, the frame rate is pretty decent, uh, anywhere between 50, sometimes all the way up and down to like 100. So once again, it probably is to do with the CPU bottleneck. And we'll see if we can adjust some of the settings here um, while we're here, just to maybe make it a little bit better. I'll actually go up the view distance. That might help a little bit. That actually helped a little bit. <laughs> I'm surprised. I thought it would not work, but the stutter has like limited a little bit more, but we're getting 100 FPS in Fortnite, more than playable in my opinion, going on non-performance mode to probably limit some of those, like that, like that kind of stutter that happens with the CPU. Um, but I mean, it's still a upgrade over what this thing originally could do. Um, and considering how much you're paying and if you get the scenario, like I mentioned, where you end up picking up one of these laptops with like a broken screen. Oh God, I think this guy is gonna get me. Oh, that guy got me, the lag hit me. But I'm gonna go ahead and rerun that again and try it with the um, normal like DirectX 11 to see if that limits some of the stutters. But if you do end up getting a laptop with a broken screen or your laptop has a broken screen and it's kind of unusable, this could be a way for you to make it a more usable experience and while also adding performance it didn't have. So let's go ahead and rerun this again with, uh, yeah, the non-performance mode. All right, well, I kind of take it all back. Um, it's looking like it's gonna be worse on non-performance mode, which is surprising to me. Um, the CPU seems to be, well, pretty much pinged at 100%. So this thing just wasn't meant to run this fast, in all honesty, with this GPU. I'm gonna land here to see if it gets any better, but yeah, no, it's just, it's not gonna be the best gaming experience. So if you are going to go down this route, you gotta make sure you have a comparable CPU or something that can handle a graphics card. Oh my gosh, I'm getting thrown all over the place. I have no idea what's going on. Right, we're gonna limit that frame rate to 60. Still not cutting it. Everything, the GPU hits zero and then it looks like, oh, we're not even getting up to 99, at least on these readings. So something is holding this thing back. Not necessarily sure what it is, but it could be some of the MME there. Again, there was, there is a little bit of performance loss by using this instead of just having like a normal dedicated graphics card. Um, it does seem to settle out a little bit, but yeah, that stutter coming in is pretty intense and performance mode ran way better. We were getting almost 100 FPS, but there were just slight micro stutters here and there. So probably locking the frame rate of 60 on performance mode would be your best bet in a game like this. Let's try a game that is more GPU dependent like Apex Legends and see if that CPU can keep up. If not, this might not be the best culprit for this kind of uh, upgrade. All right, guys, we now have Apex Legends and we are running a pretty much all low, couple of, okay, except for that. Um, we'll, we'll just leave those there. One thing we've noticed with Apex is it's kind of a weird game and it doesn't really like take huge um, FPS hits based on the settings, but you can see like mostly low settings, a couple of like higher settings um, slash medium, but I mean, you can definitely tell by looking at the game, it's very dumbed down and we're getting around 70 FPS in this little loading screen. Once we get out of here, look at that. No real stutters, definitely way better than uh, the stock performance of this APU. We had some issues in Fortnite. I really think that is more CPU dependent. As you can tell, the 970 is getting close to being pinged at 100%. So the 970 is actually able to do some more work in this game. So we're getting a more smoother experience. Uh, without the GPU, this thing was not running Apex at all at a good frame rate. So this is a pretty big step up. I don't know where these guys are at. We got one. Sheesh. <laughs> oh, wow. But hey, look at that, Apex Legends. It's more playable than I thought it was gonna be. It actually worked pretty well. Um, no so, avail. No avail. To no avail. Wow. The carry. God, this guy sucks. All right, let's try one more game. All right, guys, the last game we're gonna be testing is good old Halo Infinite. We are at 1080p low settings, pretty much lowest resolution scale right now. And hopefully we can maintain the 60 FPS. There's some really bad tearing going on right now though. So it's not looking like it's gonna be a great experience, but this would be like worst case scenario. If you could play a game like Halo Infinite on this old laptop with a GPU edition, I mean, I would consider that a win. Um, but yeah, we're close to 60 FPS, some stutters here and there. Let's see how the frame rate settles out as we continue to play. And we just destroy people. Oh. Just double kill and destroy. I think you're starting to get in bot lobbies, dude. 
I am. But uh, yeah, that CPU is just locked at 100%. And we had our first big stutter. Oh, yeah, big stutter. That was a lockup. Let me make sure I have all the settings as low as they can go before I deem this not the greatest. Okay, so we're all low, 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 low. Oh, there's a medium there. Low. All right, so we'll see if that has any sort of impact. But yeah, not too shabby. I mean, we're probably better off running like 720p, something like that if you really want to play a game like this. But again, worst case scenario, most people would probably get a GPU like this to play Fortnite, Apex, and other like lighter games. Not this game that is pretty demanding to run. But we'll run around, try to get some kills, and give you all some gameplay regardless. I'm weak. How did I... Oh, that was an assist. Grenade. Oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, there you go. There's Halo Infinite. It's okay. Overall, this setup works. It's functional. I wouldn't go much higher than a 970. Honestly, a 970 is a little bit overkill for the CPU, but it technically works. That CPU has not moved from 100%, but it's pretty decently balanced. It's not bottlenecking too bad. Let's go ahead and wrap this video up real quick. All right, guys. So we just got done benchmarking some games on this Pixio monitor from this 970, from this laptop. And, um, you know, we did actually get some better FPS. That is something that's kind of obvious with this. When you're running an APU, going to a dedicated graphics card, you're going to see a better frame per second as long as it's a decent graphics card. Of course, there is some minor drawbacks with doing this, such as not being able to put the bottom of your laptop on if you have one like this, some latency slash delay issues slash screen tearing, and a few other things that can arise on top of that, your laptop's no longer portable. So it's definitely some, uh, some give and take with it. So for most people, I probably wouldn't recommend this, but if you're somebody who likes to tinker with stuff and just wants to say, hey, this looks like a fun project, then sure, check the links in the description down below. They will be affiliate links and they will help us out. You'll pick up all this different stuff to make this possible with your laptop at home. Just make sure your laptop has an NVMe slot because it only works in NVMe. We found that out before we started the video. We did. <laughs> So as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash Toasty Bros. And do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace Goodbye. Out. And hey, if you don't want to have to worry about doing any of this weird malarkey, you know, with this laptop, with this graphics card, and this monitor, you guys could just buy a full gaming PC or a full gaming PC setup from our PC selling business. PCBros.tech is where we sell gaming PCs, gaming laptops, and you can save 2% today by using code TOASTYBROS2 at checkout. Save that money, buy a PC from us. See you guys later, goodbye.